remembering one of the youth leaders who was the mastermind behind the historic June 16, 1976 Soweto student uprisings. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Tsietsi Mashinini's family was unable to gather in their numbers to mourn the anti-apartheid activist. Following the June 16, 1976 protests, Tsietsi Mashinini was sought by apartheid security forces, forcing him to flee into exile. Mashinini lived in several African countries, including Botswana, Ivory Coast, and Nigeria. He died under mysterious circumstances in Guinea in West Africa. His family says he would have been appalled at the gender-based violence gripping South Africa. Since he would have been extremely uh, disturbed by the current situation. I mean, we are seeing not only one woman being killed by these perpetrators, we are actually seeing women every week dying in the hands of, uh, of, of jealous men, of, of, of unreasonable men, of brutal men. Uh, I think Tietzi would have cried tears to see that sort of thing. He vividly remembers how his brother once intervened to defend and protect a woman from abuse. A number of us did hear the scream, but we didn't really understand what was happening. But we saw Tietzi running up that little hill, and in no time, the woman started running away, and he was left with this uh, perpetrator. And he actually molested this fellow. Um, Tietzi was a, was, a, was, a, was a karateka, basically, and he was very, very physical. Mashinini's niece says her uncle would have been angry that women feel unsafe in a democratic South Africa. In regards to my uncle, I, I think from everything I've learned about him over the years, uh, I think he would be very angered, you know, as an activist, you know, a person who wanted equality to some sort, you know, like he, he would feel very angered to see like how men treat women. Mashinini's family have called on men not to turn a blind eye when they see incidents of woman abuse. For Newsroom Africa, Channel 405, I am Dumaule Mohlaudi in Johannesburg.